Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about foundation. Um, I figured we could do makeup 101 and we can work our way from the bottom to the top and then that way when we get to our winged eyeliner and you know, glitter eyeshadow that you guys won't be so scared. Don't worry, we won't do that yet. It'll be a little bit. But I figured we could start this way and then you know, we'll go from there. So before we even talk about skin types, you need to make sure that your face is clean. You would not go to paint night with your girlfriends and pick up the dirty canvas in the corner that got stepped on. If that was your only choice, yeah, you might be able to paint over it, but it won't be as nice as if you got the nice clean canvas. So nice clean canvas and moisturize your face. Um, that will really help your foundation stay on your face as well. So, and under eye, eye cream. That's important as well. So then, when picking a foundation, you need to know your skin type. You need to know whether you have dry skin, oily skin, combination skin. Those are basically the three choices. If your skin is dry, you need a foundation that is going to be hydrating, that's going to um, kind of illuminate your face. Uh, they consider that a dewy foundation or a dewy finish. That way, um, if you use something that's matte and you have dry patches, you know, you might look a little scaly. Nobody wants that. Um, and then if you have oily skin, you need to make sure that your foundation is oil free and that you get a natural finish. That way, um, someone who has really oily skin and chooses something that has a dewy finish, you're gonna look like a shiny piece of bacon. Delicious, not ideal for this, right? And then combination skin. That's a little bit harder because you're gonna need to find something that controls your oil and also hydrates your skin. Um, and that's usually a natural finish foundation. Um, and those are a little bit harder to come by. Um, you really gotta kind of do your homework on that. Um, also primer for me, um, I always kind of go back and forth with it. Sometimes I feel like I really need it. Sometimes I feel like it's not necessary Definitely dependent on what kind of look I'm trying to go for, um, but the primer allows your foundation to go onto your skin evenly and then it holds your foundation on. So you have a longer lasting um, result from that. And then the undertone in your skin, when you pick the color of your foundation. So you figure out, you know, you have combination skin, you found a natural finish, you think that, um, you know, it'll be good for you. Um, then you need to find your undertones. Um, but before that, what kind of coverage are you looking for? That'll be important too for before you pick your color. If you found a, find a foundation that, um, you know, is good for oily skin, but it's, you know, full cake face, and you're kind of looking for something that's just gonna shear you out, um, you're gonna have to do your homework on that one too. What kind of foundation are you looking for? What kind of coverage do you need? Um, so then once you figure all that out, then you have to pick your color, which all of these <laughs> steps are important and overwhelming, but that's okay. Cause we'll get to that point afterwards. Um, do you have a red undertone or a yellow undertone? And, um, most people already know that. And if you don't, a good way to figure that out is if you look at the veins on your wrist, if they look really blue or purple, then you have a red or pink undertone. If they look kind of like greenish, um, not, you know, not forest green, but kind of more of a green hue, then you have a yellow undertone. Um, and if you really can't figure any of that out, uh, there's a tool at Sephora, the fantastic people who work there, they have a tool that takes a picture of your skin color and, um, yeah, it, it'll tell you, tell you, you know, the red tones, yellow tones, what color you are, and a whole list of foundations that you could use. So if you're overwhelmed and you have absolutely no idea whether you're oily, dry, you know, any of that stuff, um, some, a professional can help. You need professional help, honey. It's okay. I had a drugstore brand um, beauty sponge. And I, whenever I watched YouTube tutorials, I could never, YouTube tutorials. I could never figure out why their sponges look like it didn't take a lot of effort to squeeze them until I got a beauty blender. 
massive difference. This thing I could, you know, softly squeeze. This makes a huge difference. And it's not the price of the product, it's the quality of the product. I have brushes that are fantastic that I got from Morphe that are a quarter of the price for MAC brushes and they do the same exact thing. Um, so it's not always the price of something, it's definitely the quality and that'll really be, you know, getting referrals from other people or trying it out yourself, see what works on you. Um, so this, I find, blends my foundation in so much better than using a brush. Um, and that'll really be different for each foundation type, but Beauty Blender, highly recommend it. You just get it wet, probably squeeze it under the water like 15 to 20 times until it grows and expands. Um, and then, yeah, I dab, I put my foundation on the back of my hand and then I dab it on. Um, also, foundation, it's not for your eyes. A lot of people will have the misconception that they take their foundation from the top of their forehead to, you know, their jawline and it just goes on everything. Foundation is formulated differently than concealer is, and concealer is more hydrating than foundation is. Uh, foundation will really sit into your lines and it's just, it's not meant for your eyes. So, foundation is not concealer, right? Foundation is not concealer. You don't, you don't wanna put your foundation underneath your eyes and it sets wrong and it kind of dries to this powdery finish and then your under eye circles or your bags or your wrinkles, cause honey, we've all got them, right? They look a million times worse than they did before you put your foundation on. Um, so we'll go into concealer at another date. Today, foundation is not for your eyes. There we go. Um, and then sometimes really dependent on what kind of foundation I use, what finish it has. Um, and if I'm going to be out all day long and I'm not going to have an opportunity to really check my makeup, I will take my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and a big fluffy brush and just dust it all over my face when I'm done. That way it really sets my foundation on and it puts a nice kind of barrier so it doesn't smudge off or, you know, move. Um, so yeah. Have a good time with this. This is, you know, it's makeup. You can wash it off when you're done, or if you make yourself look like a oopa loopa, you know, don't don't worry about it. Make sure you blend really well. Um, you know, your jawline it can get a little messy sometimes if you get the wrong shade and you don't blend it in properly and you turn your head and you have this, you know. Yeah, we'll put our foundation on in just a second. We're just kind of going over some ground rules before we before we get there, you know? Um, but have a good time. If you're really, really lost and you have no idea what to do, go into like Sephora or Ulta or something where they can help you pick out a better shade. Um, Ulta, I haven't actually had any experience with people trying to help me. They do have some um, beauty consultants over in the higher end makeup areas. Um, but Sephora, there are people in there everywhere. Look for a black jacket. They have that little machine, they'll hook you right up. And if you're like, I have no idea what kind of skin type I am, um, they'll ask you a few questions and then they'll be able to determine from there. But yeah, um, don't be afraid to try different products. I know Sephora and Ulta, they have fantastic return policies. If you buy something and it's three shades too dark because you tried to do it on your own and you had no idea what you're doing or the finish isn't what you were looking for, um, bring it back. Or if you just don't like it, if it looks flawless and you're like, I changed my mind, I don't, I don't want this one, you can bring it back. Um, make sure you save your receipts. If you're a beauty insider, they save your information in their computer. So if you don't have your receipt, um, you could bring it back and get a store credit or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, don't, don't worry about this. Okay. My biggest issue when I first started wearing makeup was how is it going to look on me? How are people going to perceive me? It doesn't matter, right? Who gives a shit? At this point in my life, if you don't like how my makeup looks, well then I guess you need to go figure something else out to do, right? If I love my makeup, 
then that's all that matters. If you love your makeup, that's all that matters. You want to walk out the house looking like Mimi from the Drew Carey show? I was... Right? That was it? Mimi, you know, with the blue eyeshadow? Do you, boo? You only get one chance. Have a good time with it. So... We're gonna put our foundation on now. All right, so first we are going to take our primer. I have the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. It is oil-free. Always make sure that your uh, primers are oil-free. Most of them are, well, you never know. So we're gonna take a little bit of that, about a pea size. We're just gonna rub that bad boy all over our face. A little goes a long way. I put my hair up for this. All right. So next, I'm using an older foundation that I have. Um, we're gonna see how this pans out. I'm using the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. Um, this also is oil free. My, the other foundation that I have right now is a little bit too light for my skin and the weather is getting nicer and the sun's coming out. So that might not be the best look for me. So we're going to see how this one works out for us today. Don't judge me. We're all in this together, right? Oh yeah. So I take my beauty blender. I take my foundation. I squirt it on the back of my hand. This is way too dark, but you know, you get the you you'll, you'll get the understanding of all this, right? Again, because so now this is a perfect example of my foundation is way too dark. So when I put it on, I'm gonna have to make sure that I really blend it in. so that I don't have that clear line all over my chin. Maybe me using an extremely dark foundation is a good, uh, a good indicator of, you know, how I'm putting my foundation on, right? Not underneath my eyes. You make sure that you leave this part blank. That's what concealer is for. Pounce it all in. All right, our foundation is on. This particular foundation, I don't need to set with um, with powder or anything. Sometimes it makes it a little bit too much coverage. Um, and I did not use a whole lot of this. Um, maybe two pumps total. My beauty blender did suck up a lot of it. Um, but that's what's helpful with this. This, if you use too much, this will really help it blend out, especially if you get it really damp. Um, I could still squeeze a little bit of water out of this. Oh yeah, squeeze a little bit of water out of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're all, uh, we're all blended. All right guys, so if you have any questions, um, any comments, anything else that you'd like to see from me or something that I didn't cover, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll make sure that I get back to you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that great YouTube stuff. And uh, let me know what else you guys want to see. <sighs> Thank you for sticking with me through this. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.